Welcome everyone to <laughs> the latest episode of Really Dicey. Uh, today we're going to talk about Seven C. Uh, we're going to talk. About, we're going to look into we'll talk a little bit about first and second edition, and mostly give you a reason on why you should really pick up these books. Um, it's they're they're fascinating to read. Um, very well put together. But um, uh, let me before I begin and you know pontificate uh <laughs> tell me tell me how you all how tell me about how do you feel about seven steve from what you've read so far i'll let matt go <laughs> okay well um i've uh, read the second edition book and uh, i was i was uh, very impressed with the, the breadth and depth of the setting um which is like an alternate 17th century europe um, and it, it's, it's really got everything. It, it's got, um, it's got Celtic mythology. It, it's got, uh, Transylvanian undead. It's got, uh, sorcery. It's Pirates of the Caribbean. It's, um, it, it's really a lot of space in there for you to tell any, any sort of story you want. Any heroic, dramatic story you want. It's definitely, the game, the game's definitely got a, a theme of uh you know swashbuckling heroes and i was uh, i was intrigued by the system because it is um is very different from a traditional sort of D D like system in the way it's all set up with um it's it's set up with scenes and um as the scenes unfold or even at the very beginning of the scene the GM sets up the scene, and then the players um, <laughs> the the players detail their actions as they go into the scenes, and and then they roll their dice and they use those dice to purchase things within the scene to to make it um, to make the scene move forward, and to avoid risks and purchase opportunities. So it's um, it's a lot different than a game where every move you make is determined by a die. So if a, if a bar fight breaks out, you're not rolling to dodge and the punch and the, to, to leap over tables for each individual die. At the beginning of the scene, you uh, kind of describe what you want to do. And then your roll determines kind of the outcome and you role play it, uh, you narrate it out together. That's how it is. I, you've run the game. Um, is that pretty much how it works? That's how it read. <laughs> Um, so I've run the first edition and I've right. played an ungodly amount of first dead seventh C. So I am very much ride or die seventh C, uh, first dead. I definitely kickstarted the second edition. Um, so I like proud to say I got in on the ground floor on that one, but, um, I enjoy it because it gives me some of the vibe of like another D10 based system like White Wolf with that does have a roll keep system, but the roll keep system is a little different from like a Scion game, say. Um, I'm not sitting there loaded with a bagillion dice and having to use, uh, you know, digital dice roller. Like I can get by with um, like usually when I uh, have campaigns i'm like okay you guys need to get 10 d10s and you'll be okay. fine for the whole campaign um i'm a big fan of the d10 based system i love roll keep i think that's so cool i love when dice explode which is when you roll a 10 and then you get to roll it again and just add that to your score that makes me happy there is no <laughs> like there's no feeling to describe when you just like keep getting exploding die. You're like, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. And of course, when you're, you know, you get injured to a certain point, your dice don't explode. And you're like, no, because every time you get a 10, it's just like, what could have been? Um, I like 7th C because the emphasis is on your character being to some degree charismatic, but more importantly, epic. Like, so even if you're not charismatic, socially epic, like, it's it's about your panache, which is one of the systems. Uh, Cyrano de Bergerac, to me, <laughs> coined panache as the feather in one's hat, your style, your the way you go about your life. And if you play this game without keeping in your mind that your job is to be as legendary as possible, then you're kind of missing the point of the game. 
like they even give out drama die which is like when your gm awards you for doing something particularly in character to enhance the scene and make it that much better which is uh an additional die that you get to roll as part of the roll keep system uh and I've played other games that do have some sort of like reward system. But to me, like 7C was my first experience with the reward system for doing something that enhanced the scene so brilliantly. Or like when you described what you did and the GM was so impressed, they were like, that's a drama die. Like, just throw it down. Like there's, mm, mm. <laughs> Like, because previous to that, my only experience was really, like, Dungeons and Dragons. And that was, like, I don't know, Pathfinder? Like, and this is nothing against Pathfinder. It's just, it's a different game. And yeah. you play Pathfinder in a different way. This was my entry into games that have a sense of voice and a sense of style that might be different from, like, legendary fantasy world where everyone is elves and goblins and stuff this was like no 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 you are mostly human <laughs> but <laughs> mostly uh, <laughs> but like let me let me like let me take you into a journey where now you've got like his history meets magic fantasy and i am here for it <laughs> that's my little diatribe all right <laughs> well I, I have to say that with 17 now I'm a I'm an older gentleman, so as a rule, anyway. when you're old, <laughs> you hate everything new. So when I was <laughs> given the book, Seven C, yeah. I was like, ah, oh. it's like I, I back my house thinking, all right, is this gonna be a good system? Because like honestly, you could put you can have pirate, you can put pirates anywhere. There's pirates in D and D. There's pirates in Star Wars. You know, they're, they're everywhere. But uh, those I are just, Star we're, Wars we're, pirates. They're different. <laughs> <laughs> they but what I what I really like. A, <laughs> but what I really like about what I read when I read the book, I, I was really fascinated. I think what really sells me the book is not only just the fact that it's very good world building. You know, uh, again, I, you could you could take like Assassin's Creed even or uh, Castlevania, uh, some of the newest stuff, and, and add and be make this part of this world. It's, it, it, there's so many different like cultures and mythologies you could just mix it. You could, but I think the rule system really is what what makes the game for me. Because it's it this is a very dramatic game, you know. Your your um, the the facilitator uh, or game master has to work with players to help create certain scenes. Sometimes another thing I really like about it, and uh, at first I was kind of turned off to it, was the idea of like how only villains can kill characters in this game. And I first well, heard that. Because otherwise, I was like, you, know, you don't want the brutes to do it. That'd be so lame. See, also epic, I, living your best legendary life. Exactly. It's this is this is a story, and and again, don't 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 sleep on brutes because if they, uh, if you're too damaged by the time you fight the main villain at the end, you're in big trouble. So it's not just like a easy game. I don't think it's easy at all. It's actually it can be very challenging because you have to really think of okay where you are, what is happening, and and what are you gonna do to get out of the situation. You only have a, when you roll your your details, you only get a certain amount of raises. And oh sure, I can use them all to like maybe attack one person, you know. But what about the other six people that are attacking you? You got to use some of them to defend yourself. Uh, you, you, there may be a, something going on like a fire. Okay, maybe I should get out of here. So you have to use a race to That's why get you out of that. Really specialize in a in a martial school that is really good against multiple people at once. Simple as yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yeah, that that's that's why. Like, do you do you feel this the same way? Yeah, a lot of what you said resonates. I think the important thing to do is when you are playing with someone to play with a storyteller you trust. Part of the reason why I've had such a like almost religious experience with Seven C is that I was lucky to have a series of GMs before me who I deeply and intrinsically trusted to tell the best story. And when they did, it did disappoint. Like, I still, to this day, carry the persona of one of the characters that I played, like, so much so that there's a whole school of people who refer to me as the captain, which was, like, just a shortening of mm. 
Captain Estella La Piazza Santiago, but you know, no one needs to. <laughs> um, but like, and that was a game I played like 15 years ago. Like, let's just be real. Like that I can still tell you about this character and some of the things that we did really shows how easy it is to get drawn into the mythology and into the bigger picture. This is a really great game to do, accomplish one of two things. You could either go in the direction of doing like small, short adventures where you don't explore the lore, but you rather like play in the kiddie pool of the mythology. Like the Vodachin uh, region is so interesting and dense. It's kind of like, um, it's like analogous to Italy, but not quite. Um, and they've got such a cool thing going on with their like fate witches. Anyway, anyway, I ooh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> if you're if you're arachnophobic, maybe stay away. But like, oh, it's so cool. You could just splash in that puddle, or you can go into like now you're gonna uncover the mysteries of the entire world. You could do one of two things. I've never been in a campaign that just was like was somewhere in the middle i've only ever been in like splash around and have a good time or we're going into like the deep lore so i would say that to me has always been a blind spot of 7c is that like at some point you're gonna go into the deep lore and they're really at that at that point there's like a, it's, it's a point of no return sort of situation and there are secrets of the world that once you know and I, ideally you learn because you played it as opposed to you learn because you read the GM guide. But once you know those secrets, it kind of is like, it's kind of like watching the sixth sense, knowing what the ending is. Mm. Okay. Yeah, okay. If you get me. So yeah, I, know, I, I guess all of my rambling is saying the thing that's got me stuck <laughs> with this game is that the, the lore is so rich and inspiring that it, really is conducive to fantastic communal storytelling. Okay, okay, excellent. Uh, Matt, I, I know a lot of the three of us, who this is your first uh, exposure to 7C. Um, uh, what are your thoughts about how the book is put together? Do you feel that, that there's enough information, the way it's laid out, the way it's given, that you would, if you wanted to run something like this, you would feel comfortable doing so? I think so. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of information in the book um, and it's laid out fairly well. Um, that there's a little bit of um, uh, some of the GM specific advice is spread out a little. There's a there's a GM chapter in the end of the book, but um, there's some pretty important advice earlier in the book, but that's not a big deal. Yeah, it's it's the the a lot of um, uh, world building information, you know, a rundown on all the different countries, um, you know, their economics and their clothing and their etiquette, their food, you know, um, a, a lot of information, um, a detailed character creation chapter um, that shows you step by step how to create a character, and then how to create, uh, you know, each character comes with their own story um, that they want to um, fulfill, you know, in, in, um, in addition to the larger story that the GM is telling. Um, and the game is really geared to help you fulfill that story. You get points for fulfilling that story. And uh, it's really focused. It's a very narrative game. Um, you know, you, you sit down as a group and, and decide um, the, the, the overall shape of the narrative in so much so that uh, the book advises you not to kill a character until you've talked to them ahead of time and asked them how they want, ask the player how they want their hero to die so you can set up a death scene. You know, that, that's um, it's definitely a... a um, a different style of playing than a lot of people are used to um, and it's it's definitely got uh, advantages and, and, and 
disadvantages. I would say that it's a, you know, a different kind of experience. My fear was that the game, by being so um, specifically narrative driven, would be um, a little less surprising that that come out and play. I mean, how did that, how did you find that when you played the game? Oh, as far as like surprises go? Yeah. I, I, I mean, stop being quite surprised, honestly. Um, having backgrounds for your character is, I think, now just kind of like an industry standard. But um, it's a great opportunity to like really just mess with you. Like, um, beautiful example. Uh, I picked a background. I was a pirate captain. Duh. And. <laughs> I picked a background where I had a rival. And so my rival was a privateer who, like a Montani privateer, and I was um, Castilian. So uh, those are two um, countries that are in, um, in combat with one another. So it was like perfect. It was just perfect. And like I only referred to him as Spanish pejoratives rather than his actual name. I don't actually think, I, I learned his name after the campaign ended, but I never knew his name. And there was always like some weird sexual tension between the two of us. Okay. But like, what a wonderful <laughs> moment it was. Cause the two of us would only speak to each other in our own native tongues. But we also unbeknownst to the other knew the other person's language. Okay. And so sure. we had run into this like rival so many times in our campaign, but what a beautiful surprise it was when like my rival slipped up and like spoke in Montani a response that made sense to my Castilian. And okay. it was like, oh crap, you understand me. And then it was like, so yes, there are a lot of opportunities for surprise. A lot of it comes down to the character surprise. And of course, the storytelling element. Yes, you can be surprised by the world and how things work because the base guy doesn't tell you everything. They tell you enough to be dangerous. So if you're only reading like, I'm gonna read the section on the Midnight Archipelago. Well, guess what? There's a Midnight Archipelago rule book completely separate from the base rule book. So assuming the GM has read that, in addition to the GM guide, they're going to know more than right. you do about your own culture. So you might know as much as like a farmhand from the Midnight Archipelago might, mm -hmm. but your GM is going to know the secrets of your world. And sure. so feeding and peppering in some of those secrets might be a way to get you to realize that not everything is as it seems and you do have the ability to have the rug completely pulled out from under you or not or maybe you're just a farmhand from the midnight archipelago and you're on a delightful adventure hooray <laughs> like i said okay. small adventures or big ones there is no in between okay excellent excellent um is, is there any last words from either of you about the book that we haven't covered that you want to share with our readers, especially those that may not be familiar with 7C? Uh, I want to share something that I read from the 7C rule book and it like changed my life as a GM. Hmm. Um, in the, I can't remember if it's in the GM book or the core book, they recommend doing something called karma dice. I don't know if you're familiar with the concept, but the idea is particularly if you're playing with a group of people, who have a hard time with like being a part of the story. Maybe they're on their computers or like on their cell phones rather than participating. Uh, the game recommends that you have two bowls of dye or like you have a bowl of dye in the beginning. It's maybe like 20 dye for the whole campaign. And um, you let your group know like this is your karma dye. If you fail a roll, you can spend one of these dice to like one of these dye to um, to just automatically succeed. But then that die is removed and you have only 19 now for the whole entire campaign. Okay. But when you see, so it can be good karma and then you, you know, you reward your players and if they do great things, you could put a karma die back in. So that's positive reinforcement. 
But if you need negative reinforcement, which sometimes happens if you have like, it's like, again, I played 15 years ago. So I, there were times where I played with people who were a little less ready emotionally and physically to participate. So we were a little attention ill. Mm -hmm. You could do negative karma, which is when, you know, everyone's really checked out. They're not participating or they're like, I don't know, you know, and just like not being a part of it. You can put in a different color die and that's negative karma die. And when someone succeeds a role, you could spend that die to make them automatically fail. Hmm. Hmm. It's It was a behavior management technique suggested by a game that like nowadays i don't know if i necessarily agree with just because i'm better at like managing my players but when i was a new gm having something like that where i can reward good behavior but if i ever needed to i had like a system in place for like that guy who was just like pvping for the sake of like getting all the treasure as opposed to pvping for the sake of enhancing the story Okay. That was that was where it was at for me. I was just like, oh, that's really cool that a game is suggesting that because this guide is invested in us telling a great cooperative story together. And if people aren't willing to cooperate, you kind of need to help them cooperate. You need to help wrangle and manage. So I just appreciated that they considered that, you know? All right. A anything Long for rant for Any something so silly. <laughs> no, but know. very important. Very important, though. Um, um, anything, anything else you want to add? Um, I would just say that um, if you're interested in, um, if you like um, the Three Musketeers, if you like Pirates of the Caribbean, if you, you know, if you like the 17th century <laughs> um, <laughs> swashbuckling, um, then this is a great setting, uh, and you can pick the book up for the setting. Uh, if you're interested in a system specifically geared towards creating a type of narrative, um, then you might also be interested in picking this book. I think it would be a good investment for either group of people. Okay, okay. All right, so one last thing. If you were to give a roll or a review for this uh, from 3 to 18, as if you're rolling a stat, uh, for D and D, uh, what number would you give it? Oh, uh, well, let's see. Um, I would give it a charisma. I would give it a charisma score of, I think, sixteen. It's got a great mm -hmm. setting, um, and it's got a good system for a certain type of play. And if you're interested in that particular type of play, it will give you what you want. If you're looking for a more traditional type of play where you know your fate really comes down to you know a die roll and you could unexpectedly die, <laughs> then this isn't this isn't the game you're looking for. But yeah. Okay, uh, so Mink the Seder, what would you say? For me personally, definitely I would give it a 16, maybe even a 17 out of 18. This is the kind of game I like to play. For the general consumer, I'd probably give it a 13 out of 18 for the same reasons that Matt brought up. It's a great game if you're willing to invest the time into the storytelling aspect of it. But if you're feeling like as, as, as a GM, if you're feeling like you're not really that great with storytelling, or as a player, if the story is secondary to just the escapism and the I want to smash things, then, you know, this might not be as engaging or exciting. There are more opportunities for intrigue than there are for, like, just straight up beat-em-ups. Not that there aren't great opportunities for straight up beat-em-ups. I just, the combat system compared to other games can wear on if it's not your cup of tea. Yeah. I, I I agree with both of you. <laughs> uh, I, I feel like I like personally, fun factor wise, yeah, this is like seventeen, eighteen. I'm having a great time playing this. Uh, I, I I love. We're the all that personality type. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but for the casual person, I I think that although uh, me now loves this love this uh, love this book and, and the setting and everything, I'm not sure if 
if younger me when I first played like at 15 would like it not because of the setting per se but with the rules per se so I think like like you said I think a game master you chef this is not for inexperienced game masters I think an inexperienced game master may not if they're not really good with storytelling this might be really difficult to do um but I mean D and D, you just get if you're all murder hobos, that's <laughs> that's the game for you. You know, that's a very quick thing to do. Um, you can't do that with this game. This is not a, a murder hobo game at all. This is a a game that's very thought out. Your, your your campaign has to be thought out. Your characters have to be thought out. There's there's stories. There's rivals. There's all sorts of things that uh, affect it. And if you have players or the right game master, especially, to want to play that aspect of of, of role playing. Uh, that might be really tricky you know like i saw so I, I now yes this is like like this is like the game i've been looking for in a way for like i want to act out and do my three musketeer fantasies with, you know adventures with you know um but uh yeah i would say same thing 13 for the casual person but for me it's like a high 17 18. okay i think i still have like all of my original fan art from like my campaigns and stuff like this like i said for the kind of person who's like into that sort of thing this is this is your game all right excellent well thank you both for coming to this discussion and talking about Sim thank C. you for having me i hope uh, our viewers are enjoying this as well and learning some something very new and interesting and <laughs> reach um, out to any of us if you want to talk about 7c i will chew your ear off and probably send you with way more information than you ever needed to know yes yes comment below um i'll be happy to forward message to everyone again thank you everyone for watching have a great day